Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of aligning with your highest self. So what is our higher self? Our higher self is the truest, most authentic version of ourselves. It's the version of ourselves that is free from ego, free from limiting beliefs, and is aligned with the universe, which is limitless. It's the version of ourselves that is seeking purpose and who makes personal development and cultivating healthy habits, both mentally and physically, a priority. The truth is, the version of ourselves we present to the world on a daily basis, in our work, relationships, and life, is not always our best selves. The version we present is often influenced by the media, what other people think of us, or based on keeping a perfect image so people can like us or perceive us as ideal. Aligning with your higher self is one of the most virtuous and important things you can achieve in your life, because it is only when we are aligned with our highest self that we can showcase the best version of ourselves to the world. Aligning with your higher self comes with a daily pursuit of excellence, programming our minds for success by filling our minds with uplifting content daily, and takes a commitment to cultivating habits through discipline and hard work. As Oprah Winfrey quotes, you will find success and happiness if you only have one goal. There really is only one, and that is this, to fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself as a human being. Stay tuned coming up after the break. Walk us through that process and that experience because of course, Gordon Ramsay is pretty intimidating. <laughs> and being on the show, I can imagine it was, you know, that was, that's nerve wracking. So what was kind of running through your head when you were auditioning? Definitely a bundle of nerves. I think that was probably <laughs> the most nervous I'd ever been in my life. Um, you know, it's also a strange experience because I can't see, so I have no idea what's going on around me. So there's even more of a adrenaline rushing because I have no idea if there's cameras in my face. I have no idea how many people are in the room. I don't know if the judges are there when I walk in. So it was very nerve wracking, but I tried to keep as composed as I could. I figured I would try my best and if it was meant to be, then I would uh, get an apron and move on. And if not, then I tried and uh, that's it. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Christine Ha, who is a best-selling cookbook author and the winner of MasterChef season three. Christine, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks for having me. Christine, thank you so much for being on the show today. You know, your story is one of the most inspirational stories I've ever heard. But before we get into your MasterChef journey, let's talk about when you developed a love for cooking. Sure. I didn't realize that I loved cooking until I was in college. That was actually when I taught myself how to cook. And it is because I grew up eating a lot of really good Vietnamese food that my mom uh, used to cook when I was young. And then she passed away when I was younger and didn't ever teach me how to cook, nor did she leave any recipes. So when I went to college, I was homesick for the foods that I grew up eating. So I decided to teach myself. And of course, it's uh, much easier to cook for more than one person, so I would cook for my roommates and my friends as well. And of course, there were a lot of dishes that weren't good at the beginning, but mm -hmm. when, once in a while when I would cook something that they uh, thought was delicious and ate it all up, I felt like there was uh, a lot of joy in, in, to be had in being able to create something with my own two hands and feeding other people. So I think that's what initially sparked my joy for cooking. Mm -hmm. And that's the amazing thing about cooking, right? It's like the more you do it, the more you practice, you get better at it. I know I recently started cooking and now in the beginning when I first started cooking, I was terrible. But now everyone eats my food. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm happy about that. L let's talk about when you decided to take the leap and audition for a master chef. Well, my husband, who is sighted, he watches Gordon Ramsay on TV on occasion, and he finds Gordon very entertaining. <laughs> uh, I didn't watch much television at the time. I was in grad school, so I was really busy with coursework. And we found out that MasterChef was coming to audition, uh, initial auditions in a town near us in Austin, which is about a two and a half hour drive from where I live in Houston. And at that time, John, my husband, encouraged me to audition as well as some other friends and family because I used to cook for them quite a bit and everyone uh, thought my cooking was great and they loved how I was able to navigate in the kitchen in spite of my vision loss. And so many of them said that my story is interesting and that America needs to know how a visually impaired person navigates the kitchen. So 
I was encouraged by all of them to audition and then being in grad school, uh, I was uh, studying creative writing. So I thought as an artist, I just try to experience as much of life as I can. I figured it would make for a good story or feed my creativity. So the only reason I really went on to audition was to have something in my arsenal to possibly write about down the road. But it really wasn't something that I was seeking or thought I would win by any means. <laughs> I know that's incredible and walk us through that process and that experience because of course Gordon Ramsay is pretty intimidating <laughs> and being on the show I can imagine it was you know that was that's nerve-wracking so what was kind of running through your head when you were auditioning definitely a bundle of nerves I think that was probably the most nervous I'd ever been in my life um, you know, it's also a strange experience because I can't see, so I have no idea what's going on around me. So there's even more of a adrenaline rushing because I have no idea if there's cameras in my face. I have no idea how many people are in the room. I don't know if the judges are there when I walk in. So it was very nerve wracking, but I tried to keep as composed as I could. I figured I would try my best and if it was meant to be, then I would uh, get an apron and move on. And if not, then I tried and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to touch base, you know, on your vision loss because it's so inspirational that it hasn't stopped you at all from achieving your goals and winning MasterChef. So talk to us about that and when did that, when did you develop learning about that and how did you push through the obstacles um, through that process? Strangely enough, it was happening at the same time that I was teaching myself how to cook. So when I was in college, I noticed that one of my eyes was blurry and I thought it was a contact lens, uh, changed it out, didn't change my vision. I ended up going to see several doctors and they told me that I had inflammation of the optic nerve. Um, and so over the years in my 20s, my vision gradually decreased and it was in my 20s at the same time that my love for cooking grew and I was reading more and more about, you know, different techniques of cooking, learning about different ingredients, experimenting in the kitchen. So it's sort of my vision loss coincided uh, at the same time that I was uh, really excelling at cooking. So it was a very strange period in my life because, you know, if you think about your 20s, it's really a time when you're kind of burgeoning on adulthood and you're getting out of school and you're getting starting on your career and you're figuring kind of what your purpose is in life. And so it was kind of my world was turned upside down, I think, when I had to start dealing with this chronic illness and this vision loss. Um, so, you know, every day it was not really knowing like if my vision would get worse that day or if it would stay the same or get better. Um, it was kind of just waking up and figuring out, okay, where am I now? What do I need to do to try to become more and more independent? So it was every time I would lose a little bit more vision, I would have to reteach myself how to work in the kitchen just by using the remaining four senses or using adaptive tools to get better at cooking. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's, you know, extremely scary uh, to learn that and, you know, to lose your vision. So I want to talk about how did you kind of push through the fear and uncertainty? Because I'm sure during that time there was a lot of fear and, you know, worrying about what's going to happen, but it hasn't stopped you. And that's what I think is incredible about your story is that it, no it hasn't stopped you and you're, you have great energy and you're so motivated. So kind of what, what motivates you and inspires you to push through um, that uncertain time in your life? Well, I want to say, first of all, that it you know, wasn't always easy, of course. Mm -hmm. I am human as well, and I don't want to ever make it seem like, you know, I'm always happy-go-lucky and inspiring and, and positive because, you know, it was a dark period in my life. Um, I did go through bouts of, you know, deep sadness. I was grieving the loss of my vision. So it wasn't easy. It was kind of a roller coaster, especially because I was originally misdiagnosed. So for four years, I thought I had MS, and I was put on treatment for MS and it wasn't working and I kept uh, still getting attacks. So it was very frustrating. Um, at that time, I think what really helped me through was just having people around me that really loved and cared about me. Even though they didn't know exactly what I was going through, that did make me feel isolated and alone. But I think knowing that people were trying their best to keep my spirits up, to help me out physically, to help me do you know your daily tasks like reading the mail or going to the doctor's office uh, knowing that people cared about me knowing that i was surrounded by love really did help me through that time and eventually i i felt like i would need to pay it forward and i think it vision loss really taught me how to become more compassionate towards other people regardless of what they're going through in life i think everyone has their own challenges it doesn't necessarily have to mean 
uh, you know, vision loss or chronic illness or death in the family, but everyone has their own set of challenges and they're all very real. So for me, I think that knowing that people were willing to help me out makes me now want to help other people out who are in that situation. And I think that's what keeps me going and keeps me motivated is that I think humanity, um, I believe in the fundamental, like that humanity is, is good and that we do uh, want to help each other out and we are compassionate human beings. So I just, you know, want to keep that going in this world. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's great because you're definitely inspiring millions of people with your story and your persistence. You know, I want to talk about, of course, with your vision loss, you still managed to win MasterChef, which is definitely very hard if you watch the show. So what does that title mean to you? For me, that title was really, it kind of validated my confidence and my abilities. I think at the time I was new to vision loss uh, and I had just returned to school after, you know, being a long time out of it. And so I, I was really trying to, to soul search and figure out my identity and my purpose. And I think winning that title helped me establish, you know, establish the idea in my head that I am set on earth for a certain purpose. And yes, life didn't turn out perhaps exactly the way I'd expected it, but there is a greater purpose, I think, to my life and it helped build my confidence. It helped my self-esteem and helped me just believe more in myself and my abilities. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, like, what did you learn um, from that process of MasterChef? Because I'm sure it pushes everyone to their brinks in terms of, you know, really stepping up and having to go through these challenges. Um, so what, what did you learn about yourself um, through MasterChef? The biggest takeaway I got from MasterChef was learning to trust my gut and my intuition more. I think up to that point in my life, I second guessed myself a lot, always wondering if I made the right decision, if I could have done better. But I think what taught me, what I, what MasterChef had taught me was that going through these challenges that have, you know, certain time limits and certain parameters, you make the deci the best decision that you can with the information that you have at that time. And then after you make that decision, you need to really just run with it and not look back. And whatever happens after that, you take the next step and figure out what's the next decision you need to make. But it really taught me to be more intuitive and trust what my inner voice is saying. Mm -hmm. And you know, the milestones didn't stop there with winning MasterChef. I know you also have two restaurants, so let, let's talk about them. So I opened my first one called The Blind Goat in Houston uh, in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a modern Vietnamese gastropub. It's exactly what I've been wanting to do for so many years. Uh, kind of taking the foods I grew up eating, the Vietnamese cuisine, and taking it to another level, modernizing it, bringing my own sensibility into it uh, as I was you know, raised a Texan. So kind of that influence is on that menu as well. And then just uh, in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I opened up Xin Jiao, which means uh, hello in Vietnamese, and that's a standalone uh, Vietnam modern Vietnamese restaurant, kind of serving a mix of, uh, of barbecue and Gulf Coast seafood mixed in with a lot of Vietnamese flavors. So I have those two restaurants, both in Houston. Mm -hmm. And how has that experience been? Because it's hard having one restaurant, let alone two. <laughs> it's definitely been stressful, especially <laughs> having to run two restaurants and navigating this pandemic. Uh, it is a huge challenge, but I know that looking back on my life, the greatest rewards come from the greatest challenges. And although I may not feel it yet, I know these are very big lessons in life that opening these two restaurants at this time uh, is teaching me. So I look forward to the day when I can look back and be like, I learned so much from this experience and it's helped me be able to teach other people or to just learn more about myself for the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, our show is all about inspiration and inspiring our audience. And you know, you've pushed through obstacles and reached incredible success. So I want to ask you, you know, what advice do you have for people that maybe something's holding them back? Um, something, it could be physical thing, it could be, you know, something emotional, maybe someone who's just afraid to take that step and go after their dreams, maybe they don't feel good enough. So what advice do you have for someone that is going through that and has a big dream? My advice is that remember that the answer will always be no unless you try. So you'll never know if perhaps you're good at something or 
uh, you know, you will pass a, a certain test or whatever unless you try. So for me, I say go get it and then also realize that there will be mistakes along the way. There will be trials. It's not going to be easy. But in that process, you grow as a character and you grow as a person. So you should also celebrate the small victories that you achieve in life. So even if it maybe is not accomplishing the entire big goal that you've set out for yourself, remember that what you've accomplished that day perhaps is better than what you were able to do the day before, the week before, or the year before. So if you keep in mind that you are making some sort of progress, I think that's very uh, encouraging. So that's my advice. I think that's incredible. Thank you so much, Christine, for being on the show today. You've inspired me. I've got goosebumps when you said things because it resonates with me so much. <laughs> and that's why I created this platform and my show. So thank you so much for being on the show and taking the time. And I hope to have you back soon. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, Daryl. It's a pleasure. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.